Hello, I'm Drew. This is Sky. We are doing a lower extremity pulse volume recording with ABI exam today. Ankle brachial index. Let's get started. So we're going to use Unetics Rudra machine today. For these exams, you're supposed to have the patient in the supine position, arms by their side. Thank you for relaxing. And ideally, according to the textbook, you're supposed to have them rest lying down for 10 to 15 minutes before you start the exam. That doesn't always happen, but that's how it's supposed to be. So the arterial flow can reach homostasis. Is that it? Everything is supposed to be hemodynamically stable. That's the word. <laughs> These machines are pretty self-explanatory. So I start usually with the feet and work my way up, getting all the cups. Some places will do only a uh, three cuff method and that's what we do here for as far as the legs but then we also do the metatarsals and then some places we'll have two cuffs for the thigh level we're going to do metatarsals ankle calf thigh got the big thigh cuff so i usually do one leg at a time now doing these exams you find out how little people like to follow directions so I think my new line is going to be, okay, let's play a game. We're going to see who can follow directions the best. Okay. So these exams are supposed to help test the arterial blood flow going down towards the feet. Does the, do the feet have enough blood flow going to them? Some people with gangrene, pain in their feet or pain in their legs, rest pain or claudication will have this type of exam performed. So we're starting with the seven centimeter cuffs on the feet and then you already started Sky. <laughs> okay. Can I, I'm going to start just with the right leg and then if you can keep that one down. This is how I do them. Everyone gets these cuffs on a little bit differently. 10 centimeter, 12 centimeter, and then we have 17 centimeter for the thigh. I get them on one of two ways. I will get them on, just wrap them around like this. I think I'll do a wrap around. Wrap around. Get it nice and snug because once the patient straightens out their leg, it's going to get looser. Okay, can you straighten out that leg? And then sometimes it will go right above the kneecap. I don't want it on the kneecap. So the other thing I will try, undo it. And can you hold your leg out straight? But... Other people might have better techniques than me. Do what works for you. And I'm just gonna do it like that. Okay, you can relax that leg. That's a little bit better. Not so much on the kneecap. Now, can you bend up the left leg? And I'm gonna do the same thing. Notice how I'm bending at the hips, not bending my at my back. Ergonomics, guys. Gotta save our backs. Got to use those glute muscles. Use your core. I think I can grab this one a little bit better. Let's see. Okay, can you straighten out that left leg? Good deal. With this machine, we have to meticulously hook up the connectors to each cup. For this one, we start with the yellow. It's R2. R1 would be the arms, but I guess I should show you guys that too gonna hook up these and in clinic since we have to do these a little bit quicker I will usually go ahead and start the PVR but because of the sound I'm gonna wait until I hook everything up just and I would normally do that to save thing save some time so green level three and level three on this side you have to make sure you use the correct side this is the left going on the left leg right going on the right leg left five for the foot and then the right five for the foot you might have a manual from your machine or a guide for your machine do what works for your particular machine since we usually have nurses take our upper extremity blood pressure since I work in an outpatient facility then we just put those input those into the machine for the brachial pressure. But for this video, I will probably show you how to do the upper extremity 
pressures as well. But for now, let's stick with the upper extremity, the lower extremity rather. Okay, so we're going to start inflating each set of cuffs to get the machine, the cuffs to sense the arterial pressures. Whenever blood pumps through your arteries, the diameter of your limb changes slightly with each pulsation. So the, these cuffs are going to detect those slight changes and create a waveform in this machine. So let's start with the thighs. Just gotta wait until you start seeing a waveform. The thighs take a little bit longer than the rest of the levels. So we're starting to see the waveform on the right so i'm going to tap that keep and we're going to wait for the left to come in and we're going to, we're going to make sure it's not over inflated above 68. we want this gain range to be not the gain the pressure range to be 62 to 68 millimeters of hg got that level now we're going to do the cap now, if you're actually doing segmental pressures, then you will need to keep all of these connected at the same time. Some facilities do the segmental pressures where you will get pressures from the ankle, calf, and the thigh. Here we're doing the pulse volume recording and only doing the ankle pressures. So I'm going to capture. We've got the waveforms for the calf here and both look even. We're making sure that there's no movement detected in the waveform and they're relatively going at the same rate. Now we're going to do the ankles. And the metatarsal level. The machine really tells you exactly what you need to do. And inflate again. This machine you have to hit inflate twice to make sure it stays properly inflated to get the waveform. And sometimes you can adjust the baseline, press baseline up to make sure it's not below the baseline and they're both relatively at the same level. So it's still overinflated, staying overinflated. So I can hit deflate and it'll hurry up and deflate a little bit quicker for me. There we go. Metatarsal is done. Now, if I wanted to do the brachial. Okay, so we're gonna start with the right, wrap this one up. Since I forgot about this before, we're getting the arms wrapped up now. You can wrap that. I'm gonna do the left. There we go. So we just got the arms wrapped up here. Perfect. Thank you for demonstrating. <laughs> so now we got to find the cords that will hook up to the arms. So these should both be blue. We'll see what luck we have. I'm going to use the inside of my patient's wrist. Okay. Can you take this off or do you want me to take it off? More gel. Listen to the thumb side, the radial artery. Okay. So I'm going to inflate. I think it just goes really slow for whatever reason. So now once we hear the waveform come back, then we capture and hit next. Okay, I'm gonna wipe this gel off and I'm gonna put some gel on the left, inside of the left wrist. Listen for the Doppler signal on the inside of that wrist and inflate and deflate and capture. So now we got the brachial pressures done. We got 121 for the systolic and 117 for the left systolic. 121 for the right systolic. Now the fun part, the feet. Woohoo! Now we're gonna do the ankle pressures. So I'm gonna take these metatarsal cuffs off. And I'm going to put a dab of gel on the top of the ankle. You just need a little bit of gel. You don't need a ton. So, you got to think about the anatomy. 
The femoral artery goes behind the knee. Popliteal artery splits into three. We're looking for the dorsalis pedis artery, which is an extension of the anterior tibial artery, which runs along the side of the tibial bone runs down here and then it turns into the artery right here. It can be in different locations on the foot depending on the person. So I usually start right here, use my right hand or my left hand. Sorry for the loud noise. And I look for a good arterial signal. I move laterally very slowly until I can find it. Again, I'm not at a 90 degree angle. I'm at, an, I'm at more of a slant closer to 60 degrees is better for the Doppler shift. I just move laterally back and forth slowly till I can find. And you want to use light touch. The artery is not as easy as the vein to compress, but still you can potentially compress the artery. Move higher up on the ankle and then lower down. I'm going to mute, move my gel around, start looking again. So Sky, I trust that she's healthy. I trust that these waveforms were pretty good. So I'm gonna skip that and come back. I've done a lot of these, so I don't freak out anymore. So we're gonna go to the posterior tibial artery. This one's on the inside of the leg. We're gonna angle behind the medial malleolus. I had to look up how to say that because I was raised in Georgia and they said, Maliolus. So I'm trying to do it the right way, guys. Don't beat me up if I say it the wrong way. It's how I was raised. I can't help it. Okay. Volume up. I'm angling behind the bone upwards. And we're going to make sure we're getting the best signal possible. I could hear it at first, but I wasn't on the vessel as good as I could. So I moved around. And now I'm hitting, hearing it a lot stronger. Now I'm going to inflate so I can get the pressure. Slowly inflating the cuff here, and we're going to deflate, and we're going to wait until we can hear that Doppler signal again. And I can hear it faintly, so I'm going to scroll back to where I first heard the waveform. That's the way the blood pressure that we want to keep. I'm going to go ahead to the left side the dorsalis pedis artery, and sometimes you can find it better in one foot versus the other. We'll see what we can get on this side. Okay, so we got it. Gonna angle my probe a little bit. Try to reach this machine. Turn this volume up. <clears throat> inflate. I'm gonna inflate to 20 to 30 millimeters of HG above where you can't hear it. Deflate. You gotta hold this probe in the same spot. I usually use my pinky, so we got 139 for that. I usually use my pinky to help stabilize the probe so that I don't keep on sliding. This does take practice to not slide off the vessel. Now we're gonna go to the inside of the foot. I didn't have a good camera angle on this before, so now I'm showing you with my foot. I'm angling behind the medial malleolus anterolaterally also side note if your facility requires you to take pulses this is how you do it with two fingers your index and your uh, middle finger and on the inside of the ankle and the dorsum of the foot as well you don't want to use your thumb alone Two fingers is best. Okay, back to the regularly scheduled programming. Find this vessel. Make sure I get the strongest signal. Increase my volume to make sure I can hear it whenever it does come back. Inflate. So, I skipped one, but finding this dorsalis pedis, the area, can help me to know a little bit better where to look on this side. So let's try it again and let's see if Skye doesn't have an artery here or if she actually does. So I got it.
kind of right here on the other vessel on the other side so we're gonna check kind of in that same area this is a small artery i can hear it but just ba barely if you don't get that reference i'll have to show a meme i'm legally blind i can see barely that's as high as the volume can go i can hear it but just barely so we're gonna inflate so i can't hear it anymore and then deflate there we go got a small artery there <laughs> okay so that is how you do the pvr with abi i'm going to show you my waveforms here make it bigger a little bit okay so thigh calf ankle metatarsal level so these are the dichrotic notches i was talking about you can see them a little bit here i'm messing stuff up okay let me not touch the touch screen so that is an indicator of a healthy vessel if there's none at all that is concern so high amplitude is a good sign of a normal healthy vessel lower amplitude waveforms is not a good sign flat line is a terrible sign so for the most part we got some healthy vessels here so the ABI on the right is 1.21, that's in the normal range. According to one source, 0.97 to 1.25 is normal. If you get way above 1.25, that could be indicative of calcified vessels. That means it's harder to get those vessels to close because they're so hard. So the blood pressure cuff is going to have a harder time compressing those vessels. So it's going to have a higher pressure blood pressure and then on the left we got 1.15 and that's in the normal range if you get closer to zero closer 0 0.25 0 0.5 that's not looking good that's not a good range so again we're comparing the index the highest ankle pressure for that side over the highest brachial pressure so that's it Let's close out this video. My brain is fried at this point. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Check out the other tutorials that we have filmed today. We did two other ones. Thank you to Sky for being a great patient, being patient with me and volunteering to do this. So bye.